From above, the planet Earth appears eerily still, but every mountain range and every gap on its face is a scar with many stories to tell when the Earth rumbled to life. When the Earth quakes, all hell breaks loose. They strike with lightning speed of massive bolt of destruction. These forces confuse experts who were on a desperate mission to predict when and where the next big one will hit. The question now is, are you ready for the next big thing? In a world full of twists and surprises, and where everything is bound to unfold, we all have nothing to do but to be ready and face the reality. Good morning Philippines and good morning online world. I am Francis Rex Dikea and welcome to eStories. For today's episode, our team will be mainstreaming one of the most significant environmental topics everybody should know more about. This online discussion will surely be an insightful one for us. Folks, every now and then, we were all been experiencing a lot of natural phenomena in which we all did not expect to happen. But you know, when Mother Nature unleashes her fury, no one is being spared nor being saved. Talking about natural disasters, one of the notably deadliest, most intense, and most traumatic would be the earthquakes, right? Now, in order for us to have a clear and thorough understanding about this specific natural phenomenon, which is the earthquake, our team has invited equally brilliant and dedicated experts from the field. Joining our online platform today are experts from the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or the FIVOLCS, to give to us a discussion about the basic concepts of these deadly quakes, including its causes and possible effects. Everyone, please welcome with a virtual applause, say hi to Dr. Fatima Liego and Dr. Maria Grace Francisco. Thank you so much, Dr. Liego and Dr. Francisco, for gracing our online discussion today. We also have our representatives from the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council, or the NDRRMC, who will be highlighting and will be promoting the importance of disaster preparedness and resiliency programs. Please welcome, make way for our local DRR focal persons. We have Sir Perfecto Erno II and Sir Limuel Gonzalez. So I guess everybody is now all set. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not keep you waiting and let's start this interactive discussion right away. So what is an earthquake? Or can I ask for a simple definition of what is an earthquake? Good day everyone! Thank you Francis, it is an honor for us to be here in your show. So earthquakes, by a simple definition, are the sudden shaking of the earth. These are the ground vibrations caused by volcanic activity or by the sudden release of built-up stress in the solid part of the earth called the lithosphere. And the most common types of earthquakes are tectonic and volcanic. Thank you so much, Dr. Diego. Can you please tell or can you please elaborate more to us about these two common types of earthquakes? Tectonic earthquakes occur when rock breaks suddenly due to geological forces underneath the earth. Generally, they originate from a depth of 15 to 50 kilometers below the earth's surface. They occur along faults where rocks are more rigid and brittle and are capable of breaking and slipping suddenly. After an earthquake occurs, the fault surfaces interlock again by friction and cementation. 
pressure may build up and in time, another earthquake may happen. The point at which the first movement occurs is called focus and the point directly above the focus is called the epicenter. Yeah, these terms focus and epicenters are actually familiar to us. And I just found out that these two actually differ on their locations. Great! So how about volcanic earthquakes? May I have Dr. Francisco? Well, the other cause was volcanic earthquakes. The volcanic eruptions happens when the continental plate collides with oceanic plate. So it is associated with the movement of magma or the molten rock materials within volcanoes or even by wheeling up of magma to the Earth's surface. So folks, let's be reminded of the differences between tectonic and volcanic earthquakes. They both differ on their origins and the nature of their occurrence, right? So can you cite some causes why these earthquakes happen or occur? For the main causes of earthquakes, it could be happening during volcanic eruption. Tectonic movements, this happens when the two plates slide from one another, but they do not go smoothly. Instead, they scrape from each other and that's the cause of trembling of the Earth's surface. Now, if there are causes, of course, it has corresponding effects, right? So, can you give us some? May I ask Dr. Francisco? Well, earthquake is a horrible thing. It is one of the worst natural disasters. We already know that. Many buildings, houses, properties can be destroyed during the disaster. Many lives can be injured or even worse killed in this situation. And for those who are able to survive, it affects their mental health and emotional health. It can give negative impact to them. In other words, it can lead trauma for them. All right, with all the causes and effects these earthquakes have brought to us, would you still remember a certain event that is considered the deadliest? Yeah, the strongest, the deadliest earthquake ever recorded in history. When and where was this? We so far, the greatest earthquake of recent history is the Chilean earthquake on May 22, 1960, which is estimated of 9.5 magnitude. So according to the USGS, this earthquake caused the death of more than 2,000 people in Chile. Right, Doc? Yeah. So in addition to that, um, to generating of tsunami, which is propagated around the Pacific, it adds or it kills hundreds of victims to the assessment. Wow, that was such a great number of casualties. How about here in the Philippines? Where and when was the deadliest so far? May I have Sir Erno from the NDRRMC, sir? Hello, Francis. Um, with the latest and updated records we have here in NDRRMC, um, the Moro Gulf earthquake in Mindanao last 1976 remained the strongest and deadliest so far in Philippine history. With a magnitude of 7.9, it killed almost 3,000 people and it left regions 9 and 12 homeless by this tragedy. Whoa, that was really disheartening. That was something striking to know about. Well, so much for that. For now, let's break first the monotony of this conversation. And when we come back, we'll be talking more about the things we're going to do in order to get ourselves ready when these earthquakes unexpectedly come our way. So stay tuned and we will be right back after this short break.
pang teknolohiya para matukoy kung parating ang isang lindol. Kaya kailangang laging handa. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit natin isinagawa ang shake drill sa Metro Manila. Higit sa shake drill, marami pang paraan para maging ligtas at handa sa anumang sakuna. Ang kaligtasan nagsisimula sa pagiging handa. Ito po si Chairman Francis Tolentino. Kaligtasan para sa Pilipino. Hi, and now we are back, and you're still tuning in for today's episode of E-Stories. A while ago, folks, we have already absorbed the basic concepts about earthquakes, including notable events recorded in history. Now, we move forward as to the future of our environment, considering earthquakes as part of our existence. But how can people mitigate the effects of this natural disaster? Let's hear it from Sir Limuel Gonzalez from the NDRRMC. Sir? You know, Francis, prevention is really better here. This earthquake, as mentioned earlier, are unpredictable. So all we have to do is to prepare. Nothing more, nothing less. Before it happens, the first you should do is securing movable items. Next thing is creating a disaster plan and decide how to communicate an emergency. Third is organize disaster supplies in convenient locations. During the earthquake, perform the duck, cover, and hold on and be safe as much as possible. Lastly, after the earthquake, reconnect and restore with others such as repairing, and rebuilding your community again. Very well said, sir. Yeah, I strongly agree to that. Prevention is the best, definitely. But I'm just a bit curious if earthquakes can be predicted. With the present state of scientific knowledge, it is not possible to predict earthquakes and certainly not possible to specify in advance their exact date time, and location. Although scientists have carried out research on a wide variety of attempted prediction method, however, the rates of earthquakes in particular regions expressed in terms of probabilities can be usefully estimated. Some countries, including us, are working to minimize damage and injuries through the implementation of modern earthquake resistant standards so people will be protected whenever and wherever an earthquake occurs. Aside from the disaster risk reduction management that are intensifying disaster preparedness by conducting relevant training workshops into the community. It's great to know sir that your agency is actually pushing for some programs in mitigating the effects of this random disaster. So are we still expecting more and more earthquakes along the way or shall we say few years from now? Actually, little earthquakes occur in every second in all parts of the globe. Since the plates are moving slowly but constantly, it would be possible that any time, big earthquakes could happen that make them a part of our existence. They naturally occur, and we just can't change that fact. I agree to that, sir. That's the reason why I can say that earthquakes are just really around the corner. Kidding aside, we all know that these earthquakes naturally happen. Would it be possible that people can cause earthquakes as well? Yes, not to mention the one Mr. Limuel is thinking right now, um, maybe during nighttime. <laughs> Just kidding. Minor earthquakes have been triggered by human activities such as mining, rock bursts and cavity collapse, the filling of reservoir behind large dams, and the injection of fluids into wells for oil recovery or waste disposal. 
These activities have brought unexpected changes in the environment like destruction of wildlife, the formation of lithospheric grounds, and even alteration of water and land content. You're making me think the other way around, sir, huh? Well, kidding aside, before we finally end our online discussion today, any words of reminder to our public? May we have Dr. Liego from the FIVOX. In behalf of the whole FIVOX community, we would like to say thank you, Francis, for having us here in your show and for letting us share the essential ideas about earthquakes. And I would also like to ask my colleague, Doc Francisco, for any final words. As the primary agency that monitors the geographical events in the environment, so rest assured that we will be doing our beyond best to give you the necessary updates and fearless forecasts about what's happening. So if you want to ask more assistance, feel free to visit our official website for more real-time updates. Thank you. Thank you so much to these brilliant women who were with us here all throughout the duration of our online discussion. And now may I ask the gentlemen to give any words of reminder and updates. Take it away, sir. Now, in behalf of the whole NDRRMC community, we are honored and privileged to be part of this show and spread awareness on disaster preparedness. We just want to tell the public to get involved, be prepared always, and be updated as well. Go ahead, Sir Gonzalez. Thank you, Stories, for this episode. And we are informing the public that we are open always and ready to cater all your concerns and emergencies. You may reach our local hotlines and from time to time, we are conducting training workshops and drills to our local communities. Stay safe everyone and always pray for guidance. Thank you so much guys for gracing our show for today and for sharing your valuable time and informative ideas about earthquakes. We truly learned something today and this is truly one of the books. Thank you once again in behalf of eStories. Friends, though experts agree that while it is impossible to prevent for an earthquake, it is possible to prepare for one. There are really many things we don't know about earthquakes, but we do know one thing. The way to avoid the deadly effects of some disasters is to be prepared. For when there is no surprise, there is no disaster. The danger is that if we are not prepared and we don't foresee ourselves in the future with these hazards, there will be hell to pay. Always remember, that our clock of existence continues to tick on these giant underground time bombs. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Once again, thank you so much everyone for watching and making us trend every Saturday. And don't forget to follow our official social media accounts being flashed on your screens. Catch us live once again in all Saturdays of June. This is Francis Rex MDKA, your correspondent, and this has been eStories.